so watch me transform this beauty if you're new to my channel this is Cinti Ben makeover and you're highly welcome and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much and god bless you so before you start your makeup all you need to do is to cleanse it then do your skin prayer before you start off with the main work so i cleansed the skin like clean up the face to remove that then i hydrated the skin allowed it to dry a little before i moisturized so i'm using my cetaphil moisturizer to moisturize the face so it's important to moisturize your skin whether you have oily or dry skin so after moisturizing the skin i let it absorb into the skin like dry up a little before moving on to primer for primer i'm going to be using my kids beauty primer this is going to give the makeup a very good base to sit on after that i allowed it to dry then i went ahead applying this classic mattifying primer on the oily areas on her face this would help to reduce the oil from coming out and if you really want your makeup to last you need a mattifying primer so mattifying primer dries up immediately after you apply that's why it's important you have one and if you're the type that wears makeup for a very long time you need one in your box so after that i'm going to lock in the skin prep with my kids beauty spray after locking it in i'm going to allow it to dry so moving on to foundation i'm going to be using this gentle do foundation in the shade 504 so i'm going to use my flat brush to apply it before blending so i know this foundation is not her exact skin shade yes i came out with few of my light foundations and this one was the one that was almost close to her skin color but trust me we're going to be working with it so the next thing i did was to use my damp beauty sponge to blend the foundation into the skin so after blending in the foundation moving on to cream contouring i'm going to be using this l'oreal foundation in the shade c7 to contour the face so how do you contour your face first of all you need a contour shade that is two to three shades darker than the skin to contour the face is either you use a concealer that is two to three shades darker than your skin or use a foundation that is two to three shades darker than your skin to contour your face depending on what you want to achieve some people like their contour being mild while some people like theirs being bold so if it depends on what you want whatever you want you go with it so contouring the face is actually very important because it helps your face look a bit smaller that's why it's important you contour your face so after contouring the face i'm going to be highlighting the face with this concealer this is newman beauty concealer in the shade 4204 so a little concealer you apply on the highlighted area goes a long way don't apply too much concealer on the face so you won't find it difficult in blending so after that i'm using my beauty sponge to blend the concealer on the highlighted area it's also important to use a shade that is two three shades that lighter than the skin to highlight the face because it's going to help bring the face forward so while blending the concealer do not be hard on the skin just take it gradually and make sure you blend properly before moving on to the other side so how you apply and blend will determine how the outcome of your work would look so be gentle while blending so after that i'm going to be contouring the nose with the same shade i used in contouring the face after applying with my flat brush i used my beauty sponge to blend to avoid any harsh lines so after blending next is to set the concealer with my setting powder so i'm going to be using this mirac setting powder in the shade ginger but before setting i went back using my beauty sponge to blend the areas underneath the eyes to avoid creasing so after that i went ahead to set i'm going to be setting with my beauty sponge so while setting dust it off a little so that the setting powder won't be too much on the beauty sponge then you go ahead to set so while setting do not pack too much setting powder make sure you set properly before you set the other side so you won't end up having a cakey outcome so some people prefer using their pressed powder to set the concealer before going on with their setting powder that's also good do what works for you for me i prefer to set with my setting powder then after that i use my pressed powder to give it more coverage so after setting the concealer on the highlighted area next to set the rest of her face i'm going to be using this Bicham powder palette i'm just going to take this shade here to set the rest of the face so whenever you want to set the rest of the face it's best to use her exact exact skin shade to set the rest of the face do not use a shade lighter or darker 
make sure it's her exact skin shape so after setting the rest of the face i'm going to be dry contouring her face which is low light contouring i'm going to be using this shade here to set the areas i applied the cream contour so if you cannot do your cream contouring that's fine but you must do your dry contouring so if you don't have any foundation or concealer that is a little darker than your skin you don't have a problem you can make use of your dry contouring which is having powder that is two to three shades darker than your skin to contour your face so after that i'm going to be contouring the nose with the same shade i used in contouring the face So after that, I'm going to be applying this lighter shade of powder from my Bicham powder palette and apply it on the highlighted area in order to give it more coverage. So for those that like to set the concealer with their pressed powder before they go on with their setting powder, for me, I like to set with my setting powder before I use my pressed powder to give it more coverage as long as we are going to end up having a good result. So do what works for you so after that i went back with my contour brush to blend the areas i contoured before the next process so someone complained that my videos are always fast i'm sorry for that i will try as much as i can not to make it fast anymore so after that i'm going to be using my powder brush to blend everything together so after blending everything together i'm going to be setting the face with my kiss beauty spray this would help to reduce the powder effect and also help all the products that are applied into the skin to sit properly into the skin then after that i dried it up immediately before baking so for baking i'm going to be using the same setting powder i used in setting the face to bake the face So after that moving on to the brows i'm going to be using my spoolie brush to brush her brows then i went ahead using my carrot gel liner and my angled brush to outline the brows following the shape of her brow So next is to highlight the brows. I'm going to be using the same concealer I used in highlighting the face to highlight the brow. So after highlighting, I used my blending brush to blend so that it doesn't get dry and look tacky. After blending, I did the other brows following the same method. After that, I'm going to be highlighting the top of her brows, but I used the foundation I used on her face to highlight the top of the brow so that it doesn't look too bright. It doesn't look as bright as the one underneath her brows. So after that, I'm going to be setting the concealer with this powder from the same powder palette. So after that, moving on to the eyes, which is the eyeshadow. But before you apply your eyeshadow, you need an eyeshadow primer or concealer as your base because it's going to help your eyeshadow to pop and last so i'm using my viange eyeshadow base to prime her lid after that i'm going to be using my blending brush to blend so moving on to eyeshadow i'm going to be using this color from my blossom eyeshadow palette and apply it on the outer corner then gently blend it towards the inner corner of her lid so after that i'm going to be doing the other eyes following the same method so after blending i'm going to be taking this shade of powder from my bicham powder palette to blend out the eyeshadow so there won't be any demarcation so after that i went back with the same eyeshadow blending brush I used in applying the first eyeshadow. I went back using it to blend again. After blending, I'm going to be adding some setting powder on the outer corner of her lid to define the lid. So I went back applying this eyeshadow that I applied first. I went back applying it again so that it would pop very well. So after that, I'm going to be using my Beach Wave eyeshadow palette. I'm just going to take this shade here and apply it on the inner corner of her lid.
then after that i used my blending brush to blend so next i'm going to be adding some pigment on her lid so i'm using my glitter glue on her lid first because it's going to help hold the pigment so i'm just applying it a little before i went ahead using my elsa's uh pigment i'm just gonna apply it on the inner corner of her lid so this pigment that i use has almost the same color with the eyeshadow that i applied earlier that's why you won't really notice there is pigment but if you look closely you will notice it after that i'm going to be using this dark brown shade to smoke out the eyeshadow just to give it a little bit of depth So I'm using the same brush on her crease just to make her crease a little bit darker. So after that, I used my blending brush to blend so there won't be any demarcation. So I went back with this shade I used the first time. I went back using it to apply on her crease just to make it pop very well. So after that, I used my fluffy brush to dust off the excess fallout from the eyes. Then I went ahead adding more setting powder on the outer corner of her lid to define the lid, like to further define the lid. So next, I'm going to be lining her upper and lower lash line with my carriage gel liner. So this time around, I'm using the brown shade to line her upper lash line. So I'm going to be lining her lower lash line with this same gel liner but I ended up changing it because it wasn't popping as I expected. So moving on to blush, I'm going to be using this shade here from my Tara blush palette and apply it above her cheekbone and a little bit on the tip of her nose. So next I'm going to be using my Zara mascara to prep her natural lashes in order to give it volume. After that I'm going to be wearing her dish lashes from Mismetic Lashes. You know I told you guys that I changed the color, the brown color I used on her waterline. So I went ahead using this, dark, this black color on her waterline so that her eyes will really pop. Because the brown color that I used was not popping at all. So after that, I'm going to be using this dark brown shade from the same eyeshadow palette and apply it on the areas underneath her waterline. So after that, I'm going to be prepping her lower lashes. So moving on to the lip, I'm going to be using this shade from my Blossom Lip Palette to outline her lip. So after lining the lip, I'm going to be adding this wet pepper red in the middle. So while I was lining the lip properly, the hairstylist disrupted me and there was a little um i don't know what to call it then i used concealer to clean it up so that it would look good in the eyes so after cleaning it i used powder to set it then after that i'm going to be using my powder brush to blend everything together So I went back using that nose contour brush to snatch the nose again. So if you're doing your makeup and you're almost rounding up, notice there's something that isn't setting where well. go back and retouch it. Then after that, I'm going to be setting the face with my Kiss Beauty Spray. After setting it, I'm going to allow it to dry into the skin. 
so after that i'm going to be using this mevas glow dust highlighter i'm just gonna apply it on the places i want the highlight to pop Then after that, I'm going to be adding this Lip Balm Beauty Highlighter. This is a lighter highlighter. It's mainly for very light skin girls. So I just add, I just added a little on her face. After that, I'm going to be using my powder brush to blend, so there won't be anything like harshness on the face. Everything will have to sit into the skin. So after blending with my powder brush, I'm going to be using this. TM Essential always glow on her face. This particular glow is going to help the face to glow. After that, I'm going to allow it to sit into the skin before I set the face for the last time with my Kiss Beauty Spray. After setting the face, I'm going to allow it to dry properly into the skin. This time, you need to allow it to dry. Every product you apply has to sit into the skin. That's why you need to take time to dry it. And this is the finished look, guys. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. I know who else, I think that I'm